Okay, folks, week two, and I'm gonna start off again. My name is Shannon Wright, Urban Engagement Initiative, and one of our projects that we wanna bring to you is Container to Table 365, how to urban garden, how to grow food, how to be able to minimize the supply chain interruptions due to COVID, and the pre-existing condition of food deserts rampant in our city of Baltimore and cities around the country. So these are some things that we're, we're gonna be doing and I'm gonna be talking about. Um, to do gardening, you really gotta start sowing your seeds um, about four or five months before the anticipated last frost, which we're kind of in that time frame now in the Baltimore area. So we started, this is week two. Now, I wanna show you guys some things. When seeds first start to come up, and these are asparagus beans, you're gonna notice that as they start to come up, they start to push the soil. Now, in that camera, you probably can't see, but you'll be able to see it. They start to push the soil up, and then when the seeds actually break through, they come up like these. These are radishes. My husband loves radishes, and radishes are a really good source of nutrition, so we plant radishes. Um, some of the things that take a long time are your leafies and your herbs. Now. As we do this, and I work with you guys every week to show you how to plant things, behind the scenes, we're working with um, organizations, community organizations and churches and, and, and places that um, may not be at full capacity right now, which most places aren't, to be able to get some space to start some greenhouse urban gardens throughout the city. Ideally, we want to start 14 community gardens in Baltimore City, one in each councilmanic district, so that we can kind of start to fill some of those gaps. Um, on the political side, we've come to a place where some of the subsidies have ended. We're, we're getting ready to start some new ones with some of the budget things that passed. Um, but as we are transitioning between administrations, um, there, there could be some gaps and lapses. Now, nothing you do right now is going to fix tomorrow, but everything you do today is going to ensure for a better tomorrow for you and your family. So. Uh, with what we're planting today, we're doing some herbs. And again, I don't like to show brands of seeds or things because we don't have endorsements and I specifically don't want endorsements um, because I wanna bring you what's best, not what's best for me. So now we're gonna be planting herbs. Now the thing that I like about herbs is this, um, some of them have health values and others of them have taste value. Now you may say, well, if this is about being healthy, what's the taste value got to do with it? And here's the thing. The more herbs you use to season your food, the less salt you use, which is unhealthy for you. So grow your herbs, use herbs, some which will bring nutritional values. And at the very least, you'll find a need for salt to diminish the more herbs you use. So we're gonna plant some things. Now, if you live in Baltimore City, oh, before I go any further, um, these are takeout containers. Again, you can do this on a budget. Takeout containers. Um, we don't, wherever, wherever possible, we don't go out and spend money on containers. Use the things that you have around your house. Like I said, takeout containers. Um, now, in Baltimore, we have a large population of folks that are economically challenged, okay? Um, we have a lot of food deserts. We have a lot of folks that normally would not need um, assistance, needing assistance because of the economic climate we find ourselves in right now. So as I talk to you, I'm just mixing up some dirt to get things going. We've got some mulch uh, with a little bit of peat moss mixed in. And in here, we're gonna put some dirt over that and throw some seeds in and really get moving. Now, some of these herbs take a little while to grow but as they grow, the leaves are what you use. So it doesn't take that long before you can actually start to pick and prune and use. So, um, now back to the political side for a few minutes. Right now, churches, um, depending on where you are, are at 25% capacity if they're meeting at all, which means there are a lot of parking lots that are empty. And in spaces in those parking lots, uh, you can put up a greenhouse, which are really pretty easy to build. And I know that because we did one here. Everything that I'm telling you to do and I'm explaining to you to do and I'm suggesting to you to do are things that we have done. So I'm not just talking out the ether. I'm talking from experience and that makes a difference. So uh, in this container right now, we're gonna grow some basil. 
And these are mom myth basil, which means bigger leaf, um, which means you need fewer leaves to be able to really, you know, get the flavor. Now, these seeds are tiny. These seeds are very tiny. They lo almost look like poppy seeds. So you're gonna take them, you're gonna sprinkle them lightly all around, a bunch of them, because later as things start to come up, we'll talk about how you thin the seeds. So once you've got your seeds in, you're gonna put a light, and I do mean light. The smaller the seeds, the less dirt you want on top of them, because that's the more work they've gotta do to push through. So with tiny seeds, and you'll find your herb seeds and your tomato seeds are the smallest, um, you wanna try not to put as much heavy dirt on top of them. So we've got this one planted. This is our monmouth basil. So um, you're just gonna lightly, I use a spray bottle and water to lightly spray the soil um, to keep it from drying out and give the seeds a little bit of what they need. Now, if you have a windowsill, and next week we'll do some uh, video and footage of windowsills, different types of windowsills, uh, whether you've got radiator or, or what kind of heat you've got um, to be able to make it better to heat your seeds as they're growing because that helps speed up the germination. So we'll get, all, get to all of that next week. But again, I'm mixing up the second container um, to be able to show you. Now, hopefully the camera guy also known as my husband, will tell me at some point how much time I'm in because we're really not trying to make this an all-day process. But I want you guys to understand there are certain things that you can grow and do that will help um, with the health issues and aspects for your family, certain things that'll help with the flavor, and some things that'll just be cost-effective. Um, we're going to work on some of the things from all three categories. Uh, and again, behind the scenes, we're going to be working with different groups in the community uh, to be able to start community gardens, uh, to be able to do this and grow, to help fill those gaps and deserts and whatnot in the city. Um, if you have questions, please reach out and message me. You can find me on Facebook, uh, Urban, in Urban Engagement Initiative. Um, we are all really pretty responsive. You can message me directly, Pastor Shannon Wright. Uh, reach out find us, ask me questions. If you don't live in Baltimore, you live in another area, uh, let me know where you are and we can figure out what zone you're in so we can figure the timing for you for how to plant things. Folks, right now we're in a challenging time, but this can be the time where we rededicate ourselves and, and recommit to getting healthy and staying safe for ourselves and our families. I'm here for you and I'm here with you. If you need me, reach out and we'll be back again next week. Again, Pastor Shannon Wright, Urban Engagement Initiative, Fish and Five Loaves Program, filling the food deserts, making you healthier and stronger to get through this new year. And by the way, Happy New Year to all of you. Mm -hmm.